Hey guys, Perturbro here, infamous brother to Megabro. Going to do a quick tutorial on the blockading and shipping lane system in AG Odd Civil War 2 game. Um, the reason I'm doing this tutorial is I did not feel like it was all that intuitive in, term the, in terms of the mechanics of the game. I had to go on the forums and kind of read into it and get a better understanding of how it worked before I felt comfortable from the Union perspective executing the blockade and um, the shipping lanes. So first I'm going to focus on blue water blockades and shipping and then we'll talk about brown water. Uh, if you're not sure what those two different terms mean, you will at the end of this tutorial. So first, blue water blockades. What does that mean? So you have two blockade blocks. You got the Atlantic blockade, and then you've got the Gulf blockade. You get about 11 of these blockade flotillas that you can use in any way that you feel uh, fit. Um, I would just note that for purposes of the blockade, these blockade flotillas are built for this purpose, and so if you click just one of these blockade flotillas to so the ship right here, um, the USS Cleveland, and go to various. The blockade uh, power is 10. Um, how does that translate? Well, if you take another one of your uh, steam frigates, which are pretty powerful ships, uh, the USS Ottawa only has a blockade of four. So that gives you some perspective, right? Um, in these blockade blocks uh, is where you get some of this percentage. Not all of it, but some of it. Um, and you put your offensive ships into this block and that increases the percentage based on the number of blockade power, right? Again, this number right here. So uh, I would say if you took five of your um, 11 blockade flotillas that the game automatically gives you towards the beginning of the game, you don't have to build them, you're, you're provided them. So if you put five here and five down in the Gulf, of, Gulf blockade, I want to say you get it between about, I think it's about 35%. Um, blockade of Confederate ports. What does that mean? That basically means that um, 35. There's a 35 percent uh, impact, so to speak, and I, and I don't want to say it's 35 percent of the entire CSA co economy because it's it's not that simple. Um, if the game made it that simple, then I wouldn't have to do a series of tutorials for you to understand the game, right? <laughs> but essentially, it just means that 35 percent is um, a relative figure to give you an idea of the impact that your blockade is having on the cash and war supply that the Confederacy is receiving every turn. And obviously you want to get this number higher and higher, right? So that's part of what this tutorial is going to talk to you is how to get that 30 or 35% higher. Okay. The first step is to put most of your blockading flotillas in these different blocks. So I have five here, I've got four here um, in the Gulf. And then, oh, I actually moved one here. Oh, no, it's not. Okay. But, all right. So I got four there. Um, I actually moved one up here into the brown water, which I'll talk to in a moment. Uh, and for whatever reason, I have one here. I need to move him out and put him back in, up in there. But um, So the number of offensive ships that you have here uh, will increase um, the percentage number of the blockade. And then obviously you want to put transports out here because what that does is it keeps them uh, fueled so that they don't have to go back into port to resupply. And if you put them on green green and avoid combat, because again, they're not here to engage these uh, frigates, these brigs rather, uh, they are here to inhibit the cash and war supply. So putting them on green green, evade combat will ensure you don't go into combat with the, the brigs um, and the green green allows them to stay out here longer. So you don't have to, that way you don't give the Confederacy, you know, two turns worth of a, a non blockade fleet out there. Um, the way they, to, to, Attack brigs, in my opinion, is to put a separate fleet, attack fleet out there. So like here I've got a couple of uh, steam frigates, a brig for um, uh, scouting purposes to be able to see these guys, and then some transports to uh, fuel and supply them, and then I've got them on orange-orange. That's the way to do it. I haven't done it up here in the blockade fleet, um, but uh, that definitely is something I could do. So uh, that's the, the blue water blockade in a nutshell is the number of offensive ships that you have with this blockade power. Um, so many, the larger the number of blockade power you have in a box, the higher this percentage will go up. And I'd say without any other things going on the map, with five blockade flotillas in each of these boxes, you get about 30 to 35 percent, which is not bad. Okay. Um, that's the that's the impact you're having on the Confederacy's economy every turn, and I can't tell you what specifically that that translates into because just so many other factors go into the impact that has. 
For example, if you're playing against a confederacy that invests a lot of money into ironworks and armories and arsenals early in the game, um, you know, it's going to be a different impact than someone doesn't do anything at all, right? Or a confederacy that has more territory, more cities, and, and more population than, than perhaps uh, another game. Again, that, that percentage is going to have a different influence. So, so that's the, uh, the the blue water blockade blocks is, is how that works. The shipping lanes, um, now it's a little bit different, so just kind of bear with me. But you have you have two influences here. You have merchant ships and you have transports. So um, it's not obvious from the manual that these transports have any other purpose other than transport your dudes back and forth and supply them while they're on land. But they can actually earn you cash. Okay, so here's here's a good example. So let's see here. We have one, two, three, four transports. Four transports in this shipping lane. And I don't think I have any of this. Uh, yes, I don't have any of the Gulf. Let's see. I think it's my only shipping lane. This is this is your money-making lane from the Union. This is your inhibitor. This is what keeps the CSA from making money. This is what makes you money. Um, if you look at here in our notes, and again, I'm only in early 62 in this game, so um, that'll give you some idea of where we're at. Let's see here. I just had it. I'm sorry. I just had. Okay. Okay. So our shipping lanes are transports. Okay. This is just our transports. Transported 2,854 supplies overseas. And so for maximum capacity is 7840. So that means we can do 7840 a turn. That translates into cash and war supply for us, okay? And then our merchant fleet delivered 52 money and 38 war supply. That's all from right here, all right? And it notice it dis differentiates between merchants and transports. See these slashes here? These are the merchant fleet that you start with and then you can supplement it with other merchant ships and transports. So I'd highly recommend as a union investing a lot of money early on in these transports for two reasons. Um, the second, which is gonna be pretty obvious here in just a moment. One, it gives you flexibility on the open seas to transport your fleet and outmaneuver the Confederacy because they just don't have enough troops to protect everywhere. Um, so you can really kind of pick and choose where you hit along the coast and invade. But the number two is it's a money-making uh, enterprise, right? I mean, for one of these transports, you're talking, uh, let's see here, how much does it cost for a transport? Twenty money, four conscripts, ten war supply. You can pay for that pretty quick, right? A couple turns of having your transports in your shipping lane pays for a transport, and then after that, it's just money. Um, and then also for your um, blockading fleet, again, you start off with eleven, so you don't have to build more. And I would argue that uh, building a blockade flotilla will not pay it for itself by the end of the game. But the advantage is, is that the Union has such a robust economy that anything you can do to inhibit the Confederacy's economy is money for you, right? So don't think of this as investing in a blockade fl flotilla if you decide to as, hey, I need to pay for this thing by the amount of money that I deny the Confederacy. What's more important for you is separating as further as furthest as possible as you can your economy from his. So the more money you make, the less money he makes. The more war supply you make, the less war supply he makes, that sort of thing. Blockade flotillas are expensive though. The transports though will pay for themselves very quickly. All right, so that's your blue water blockade uh, in a nutshell. Hopefully I covered the very specifics. Okay, now let's talk to brown water blockades here briefly. What is a brown water blockade? It's basically any sort of blockade that you impose on your opponent that doesn't involve the blockade blo blo blocks here. And what will happen is as you do blockades in the brown water areas, it will increase the overall percentage down here. So while this the boxes may only be 35%, we might be imposing blockades elsewhere on the map that increases this number um, exponentially. So how do you do that? There's really two ways. One is through your fleet and two is through forts. All right, so notice here, we have the uh, fleet, it uh, doesn't have a name, but it's under Warden, and he's hanging out in Hampton Roads, uh, the water area here. And it says here we need at least eight naval elements to blockade this zone, and we have eight. How do we get to eight? We have one little carrot, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, and then we actually even have more than that. We've got 10, 12. 
14. 14 ships uh, 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 hanging out here, right? So that blockades um, any kind of port that uses this inlet here or outlet to export and import materials. So as you can see, we've got Hampton Roads that has a port on the inside peninsula here. We've got Norfolk that's got an inside uh, port. And then Richmond, which has got a port all the way down. So they are all blockaded from has having this little area here. Not a whole lot the Confederacy can do about that, honestly. They just can't compete with the uh, Union's Navy. Um, I mean, if you tried, you're going to be investing a lot of money that you could be spending on land forces. You know, really, to deal with this situation here, the best way for the Confederacy to deal with it is build a whole lot of artillery here uh, and take this take Fort Monroe. Um, right, but again, that's that strategy. It has nothing to do with blockades and whatnot. But the point is, here, right, if you hover over the water area, it will tell you how many elements you need to blockade that zone, and then you need to put that number of elements here. And there's a bit of a bug with the game. So what will happen is the first turn, when you have it blockade, uh, it won't tell you even though it is blockaded. Um, good examples when you load a saved game, you have to run a turn before it'll actually reveal the fact that it's been blockaded. Now, does that mean that the turn that you load, these aren't blockaded? No. It just means that the game's bugged and it's not showing it to you. Okay, so just realize that you may in fact have a port blockaded. You just don't know it yet because you have to generate the turn, all right? And again, the best way to know that is if you hover over the area, it'll tell you how many elements you need to have to blockade that. So the reason I tell you that the element blockade thing is that if I hover over here and it says you need eight and I have four here, then I need four more. Um, it doesn't mean I need eight more. It means I need four more. Uh, as you can see here, we've got, I want to say 10, no, two, four, six, eight. So eight in this blockade flotilla stack. Uh, therefore, we have blockaded Pensacola, all right? Um, now, if we did not have Fort Pickens, we'd probably need more ships than the eight to blockade this. We'd probably need like 14. A uh, good example would be, let's see here, here. So here requires 12 to blockade this zone, to basically keep uh, New Orleans from sending uh, ingress and egress this way down here for supply. I don't think it can send it up through uh, Cock Island, Coney Island, but perhaps it can. Now, the one way to reduce the 12 elements necessary to do that would be to take these forts, because forts also can potentially blockade a port. Um, it may not always, but it can definitely lead to less ships being necessary to blockade a port. So, good example. We have taken Fort Pulaski, Fort Sumner, and Fort Fisher. And if you notice, the little icon here for Wilmington, Charleston, and Savannah, they're all blockaded. We don't have any ships here, but they're blockaded. How is that, Protobro? Good question, you ask. Um, these forts, because they have artillery in them, again, artillery in them, if they don't have artillery, this fort will not blockade this port. But because there's not any other... Um, adjacent ocean zones that this port can ingress and egress supply we have blockaded this port just with this fort you like that little rhyme um, so that's another way to do brown water blockades is to take strategically located forts put artillery in them and then they will uh, blockade at least partially the neighboring ports now, I would notice, I have did a little bit of testing, that, um, for example, Fort Sumner, uh, Sumter here, even though it does, it is blockading Charleston, it's not completely blockading Charleston. So Charleston's still getting some money and some war supply in and out. It's just not as much. Um, I suspect that if I were to put eight naval elements here uh, in conjunction with Fort Sumter, I would completely blockade Charleston. Um, I'm, I'm just guessing, but... Just know that this isn't a foolproof strategy, but it does um, diminish the income and the war supply for your opponent taking some of these strategically located forts. And in my opinion, it's easier, right? Because these forts can fall pretty easily. I used uh, a division um, and a siege artillery to take all these forts, so not a lot of resources involved there. 
uh, and I don't really have to worry about a counterstroke because these most of these are islands. So they're islands. Um, I think here actually, yeah. So he can get to me from land from here, but it's still hard, right? He's gonna have to, and I'll be able to respond to it in kind. I've also got some uh, some ships here that I can use to block him if I need to. Um, by the way, uh, kind of a side note here. Four elements of uh, of a navy will, I think it's like 90 or 95% chance block a uh, land forces crossing. So if I brought him out and just put him and had him chill outside of the fort, it's going to be impossible, near impossible for him to actually cross into and besiege Fort Sumter. Now that being said, if this uh, if my fleet was hanging out, which is it's hanging out right here, it's getting shot by this uh, by these forts actually, but just hanging out here. Um, so I do have to watch out for that. But again, taking these forts is another way to do a brown water blockade. And then for each one of these, so notice here I've got Wilmington, Charleston, Savannah blockaded, and then I've got uh, this whole inlet blockaded, and then I've got Pensacola blockaded. And between that, um, four blockade fleets uh, or uh, flotillas here in the Gulf and five in the Atlantic, I have a 60% blockade. That's pretty considerable. That's a big impact if you're talking, you know, a four-year uh, campaign. Um, the the losses that the the Confederacy is going to suffer in terms of cash and war supply. So hopefully that was informative. Uh, again, brown water being your blocks, or rather blue water being your blocks, brown water being the uh, other areas you can impact. Um, taking out forts is one way to do it. I could take Fort uh, Saint Philip, Fort Jackson, and I believe that would partially blockade. New Orleans, um, and then uh, as you can see here, taking Fort Pickens in conjunction with a fleet here uh, allowed me to fully blockade Pensacola. I want to say Pensacola was not fully blockaded just with Fort Pickens. I had to bring a fleet in of eight elements, but because I had the fort here, it only required eight rather than say 14 or 16 to blockade Pensacola. All right, so hopefully with that, that was very informative and helpful. If you have any additional questions with regards to the blockades or the brown water, blue water blockades, the shipping lanes, or really anything else regarding the game, please let me know. Hopefully I can uh, provide some information to that. And if you found this video helpful, as always, please like the, the video. Um, I'm not asking for my personal uh, edification. I'm, I'm asking because um, it helps other people find the videos so that hopefully they can learn the game. It's a very steep learning curve, but once you learn it, it's a really fun game. And I'd, I'd like to think that these tutorials kind of get people playing the game who wouldn't otherwise because it really is a steep learning curve. So with that, thank you so much for watching.